The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. And Kraft, you know, makes the famous pasteurized processed cheese food Velveeta. Velveeta has a wonderful cheddar cheese flavor that's rich yet delightfully mild. It's delicious, and it's the finest quality cheese food you can buy because it's made by Kraft, the name that for years has meant only the finest in cheese and cheese foods. Get a package or loaf of Velveeta tomorrow and enjoy the cheese food of top quality Velveeta made only by Kraft. It's that hour of the morning when the great Gildersleeve's house is a beehive of activity. And the keeper of the bees is busy dispatching his swarm. Leroy, you'd better be off to school. Bronco's giving me a lift. I'm waiting for him to say goodbye to Mark. Goodbye. Goodbye, honey. I'll miss you. I'll miss you, too. If you don't break it up, I'll miss school. <laughs> now, Leroy, this is important stuff. Uh, just a minute, Leroy. I have to say goodbye to the twins. Here they are, Mr. Bronco. <laughs> Well, Bertie, two big arms full. Yes, sir. Yeah, two big sacks of sugar. Okay, okay, kiss the sacks and let's go. <laughs> Keep your shirt on, Leroy. Kiss Daddy goodbye, babies. He has to go to work. <laughs> what did you say, Ronnie boy? He said, da, 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 da. <laughs> Leroy, let Bronco talk to his son. What do you want Daddy to bring you? Well, I'll look around town, but I'm not sure they have any bicycles your size. Oh, for corn's sake. Oh, isn't that cute, Auntie? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think he asked for a bicycle, though. Sounded more like snowshoes. (laughs) Mr. Bronco, little Linda wants some attention, too. She does? God, look at those big blue eyes. When she's about 16, she'll get plenty of attention. Well, her mother did. She did? Now, Auntie, Bronco, say goodbye. You mean he hasn't said it? Goodbye, Linda doll. Bye, Ronnie. (coughs) Did you hear that? They distinctly said goodbye, Daddy. They did? Of course they did, Mr. Gillsleeve. They distinctly said goodbye, Daddy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, brother, I'm walking to school. Now, wait a minute, Leroy. I'll be right with you. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Daddy. (laughs) Goodbye, darling. That's quite a husband you have there, my dear. I think so. It is wonderful the way you two get along. Bronco's so attentive and thoughtful. Well, I don't know, Anki. What do you mean? Well, I've been waiting all week for him to remember something rather important. Oh? I just hope he doesn't forget our anniversary. Your anniversary? You and Marjorie, you were married in May. Well, I don't mean our wedding anniversary, Anki. Hey, you, what anniversary do you mean? Why, the day we had our first date, of course. Yeah, oh, well, Marjorie, is that so important? <laughs> is that important? Uncle Mort, you man... If we'd never had our first date, we'd never have fallen in love. We never would have married. Well, that's logical. Yeah, I guess it is pretty important at that. Well, it certainly is. He hasn't said one word about it all week. He hasn't? I thought surely he'd mention it this morning. Uh, Should he have mentioned it this morning? Well, we should be planning something. But I'm not going to bring it up. If it doesn't mean anything to Bronco anymore, it doesn't mean anything to me. You know, Marjorie, perhaps Bronco plans to surprise you. Oh, do you think so? Yeah, I'm sure of it. Excuse me, I have to go downtown. Yeah, I've got to find Bronco. Where is that boy? Gildy, wait a minute. Yeah, hello, Judge. Water commissioner's hurrying this morning. What's the matter? Is your reservoir on fire? (laughs) No, Judge, I'm trying to put out a fire at home before it gets started. What are you talking about? I've got to find Bronco. Have you seen him? Yeah, I've seen him. You have? Where? I saw him yesterday in front of the post office. (laughs) Or was it the day before? You, my goodness. Judge... It was the day before. I remember distinctly because Bronco was working on the Red Feather campaign. Yeah, I know that, Judge. 
As a matter of fact, he took my contribution. By the way, Gilde, have you contributed to the community chairs? Yes, Judge, I have. But Bronco's facing a crisis. We all are. The need is greater than ever before. Yeah, Judge, you don't understand. Yes, I do. The Red Feather campaign must raise sixteen and one half million dollars extra this year. More money is needed for the handicapped, youth programs, elderly people, families in trouble. Well, I know one family that's going to be in trouble if I don't find Bronco. What's this, Gilda? Judge, this happens to be the anniversary of the first date Marjorie and Bronco had together. Oh, isn't young love sweet? Two hearts, the beat is one. Pity pat, pity pat, pity pat. Yoker. <laughs> Judge, stop mooning about love. If Bronco forgets this anniversary, there won't be any. You mean the boy has forgotten? Yeah, I'm afraid so, Judge. He didn't mention it to Marjorie this morning, and this was the deadline. Oh, my. It would be terrible if Bronco forgot it. In the eyes of a loving wife, there's nothing so unpardonable as forgetting a sentimental occasion or getting the dates mixed. Gilday, you should stop whatever you're doing and go find the boy. Judge, what do you think I'm doing? Gildy, look. There he is in the next block. Where? Where? Crossing the street at the corner. Here, Bronco! Hey, Bronco! Gildy, get out of the traffic. Oh, I'd better go, too. If he doesn't make it, maybe I will. Bronco! Bronco! Uh, Gr- Bronco, you know, I'm glad I caught up with you. What's the matter? Something wrong? My boy, do you know what day this is? Yeah, sure. It's Wednesday. Yeah, I know that. But think now, think. Doesn't it mean something special to you and Marjorie? Well, it isn't payday. It... <laughs> Bronco! Oh, hello, Judge. Oh, Bronco. Do you know what day this is? Judge, I just asked him that. It's the anniversary of your first date with Marjorie. Judge, let me tell him. Pussy, you old goat. (laughs) The anniversary of our first date? Today? I've been combing the town for you, Bronco, to remind you. And it was I who first spied you. Judge, please. Gosh, am I glad you told me. Well, I knew if you didn't remember it in some way, Marjorie would be disappointed. Oh, I'll say. A man could lose his happy home over a thing like this. Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't know what we'd do without you. Well, if I do say so, I'm the one who keeps the house on an even keel. I'm pretty alert about these things. I'm alert, too. I've already thought of an ideal gift for you to take to Marjorie. Oh, well, if tonight's the night, I haven't much time to think about it. What have you got in mind, Judge? Why don't you give your little wife a charm bracelet? Charm bracelet? Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Yeah? You could get little sterling silver charms commemorating all the times you treasure such as your first meeting, little silver bells for your wedding day, two pair of cute little booties representing the birth of the twins. That'd be four booties. Judge, we can multiply. (laughs) I think Marge would like the bracelet idea. I'll get one and take it home tonight. I've also thought of an appropriate little verse to go on the card. How's this? Darling, though time is fleeting... I recall our first meeting. (laughs) Uh, yeah. Judge, don't overdo it. Well, I'd better get going. Thanks again, men. It's a great idea. Yeah, don't mention it. Glad I thought of it. You thought of it. Franco, I have one more suggestion for the bracelet. Oh? You would now, Judge. Buy a little silver faucet so you can turn off the water, Commissioner. George, I'm glad I found Bronco and tipped him off. Now, if I can sneak in the back way, I'll have Bertie prepare a surprise dinner for the lovebirds, and everything will be great. Gildersleeve, you're a KG operator. I want a roof over my head. Say, Bertie's feeling pretty good. On the table and love in my heart for you. Yeah, Bertie. I'd like to have peace of mind. And be friendly all the time. Hey, Bertie? With love in my heart for you. Bertie, what's going on? I'll make a fruit salad, Mr. Gillsleeve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope it's a little extra special, Bertie. Yes, sir. In fact, I came home to talk to you about preparing a very special dinner this evening. 
A special dinner on Wednesday? Well, tonight is no ordinary Wednesday. Where's Marjorie? She's upstairs with the twins. You're good, then we can talk. Bertie, tonight is the anniversary of Marjorie and Bronco's first date. It is? Ain't that something? Now that you know, Bertie, I'll leave everything up to you. Yes, so you gotta leave it up to Bertie. She'll put on a feed that's, oh, it'll look just like an highway picnic. (laughs) That's the idea, Bertie. So it's the anniversary of their first date. Miss Gillsleeve, how'd you ever remember? Well, Bertie, in many respects, I'm like an elephant. Yes, sir. (laughs) I never forget. With that Bronco. I chased him around town all morning just to remind him. It sure is a good thing you did. If that boy forgot an occasion like this, he'd be in hot water. Well, somebody around here has to think of these things, Bertie. Yes, sir, and you thought of it. Mr. Gilsey, I don't know what they'd do without you. you. Now that you mention it, Bertie, neither do I. I don't know any man who thinks more about his family than you do. You are water commissioner with a brain. Yeah, thank you, Bertie. Yes, sir. When anything comes up around here that ought to be thought about, you think about it, because you're a water commissioner with a brain. Well, what can I say? Mr. Gilsey, you know why you think of everything that ought to be thought about around here? Uh, tell me, Bertie. That's right, because you're a water commissioner with a brain. <laughs> By George. Bertie's one of the smartest women I've ever seen. Yeah, I think I'll go up and reassure Marjorie. Oh, Ronnie, you think you're so cute. Yeah, look at that. What a picture. Little mother hen and her two happy chicks. Don't you jabber? Say something. Let me hear you say daddy. Cute. I wonder if he can do it. Now, Linda, you try it. Say, Daddy. Come on. Daddy. Marjorie does it well. (laughs) Ronnie, you say, Daddy. (laughs) Yeah, that was close. (laughs) Daddy. Daddy. I don't know why I'm teaching you to say, Daddy, the absent-minded lug. Oop. (laughs) Marjorie. Oh, Uncle Ward, I didn't see you standing in the doorway. Well, just dropped up to have a word with you. Well, come on out in the hall, Unky. The twins are ready to take their naps. Have a very smug expression on your face, Uncle Mort. Well, Bertie paid me a nice compliment when I came in. Oh, for what? Well, as Bertie says, I always think of things that should be thought of. <laughs> well, I wish I could depend on that husband of mine to think of things. Yeah, Marjorie, stop worrying about Bronco forgetting your first date. Well, I don't think there's any question that he's forgotten it. You? Uncle Mort, is that asking too much of a man? Well, no. After all, it's only been two years. If he forgets the time we met, why, he could forget our wedding anniversary. Now, Marjorie. I don't think he cares anymore. Marjorie, he does, too. No, he doesn't. He's forgotten all about it. He has not forgotten. How do you know? You do. Well, yeah, I know. You can take my word for it. So dry your eyes and be patient. Oh, I'm sorry, Anki. I shouldn't have doubted Bronco. No, of course not. Why, he'd never forget our first date. How could anybody forget such a wonderful evening? We went to a college dance together, remember, Uncle? Sure. You and Miss Milford were with us. We were? Oh, yes, I remember. (laughs) You two went along to chaperone us, and we ended up chaperoning you. Oh, yes, wonderful (laughs) evening. How could Bronco ever forget it? Oh, it was the most wonderful Friday night of our lives. Yes, I mean, it would... Friday night? Well, of course. That was the night of the dance. What's the matter? Oh, my gosh. Excuse me, Marjorie. I have to run downtown again. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Hi there, Bertie. What are you so happy about? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Heaston. Bertie's happy because she's going to make Mr. Gillsleeve happy and Miss Marjorie happy and Mr. Bronco happy and little Leroy happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine, but how are you going to make them happy, Bertie? Well, sir, I'm going to fix them their favorite vegetable to eat. Cauliflower deluxe. Ooh. Yes, sir. You see, I just cook a head of cauliflower... And then I make a smooth 
golden cheese sauce with Velveeta. Mm -hmm. I just melt a half pound of smooth melting Velveeta in the top of the double boiler, stir in a quarter cup of milk, season, and zingo. I pour that nice smooth cheese sauce right over the cooked cauliflower. And that's cauliflower deluxe? Yes, sir, and that's cauliflower delicious. Because Velveeta's got the swellest, rich, yet mild cheddar flavor you ever want to taste. Oh, I know, Bertie. And don't forget Kraft's smooth, melting, pasteurized processed cheese food will make that cauliflower extra nourishing, too. Because Velveeta's rich in important food values for milk. And, of course, Velveeta is as digestible as milk itself. Yes, sir, I know. I use Velveeta sauce to deluxe lots of different vegetables. Really, Bertie? Why, sure. I melt delicious Velveeta to deluxe lots of vegetables. That's fine, Bertie. Mr. Heaton, you know what Bertie does to deluxe lots of vegetables? Yes, Bertie. That's right. Bertie melts delicious Velveeta. <laughs> Well, it's the little things that are important to women. Marjorie was afraid that her devoted husband, Bronco, might forget the anniversary of their first date. When the great Gildersleeve found out about this, he promptly assumed the role of Mr. Fix-It. He fixed it. He told Bronco the anniversary is tonight. Now he's just discovered it's Friday night. You, 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 how was I to know it's Friday instead of tonight? It was a natural assumption. Marjorie was so concerned about it this morning. Downtown, Leroy. I'm going over to Piggy's. I'll walk with you. Well, I wasn't planning to walk. I'm on the run today. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I've got to find Bronco. I've got to tell him that he and Marjorie had their first date on Friday. Well, what's your hurry? It's only Wednesday. <laughs> you got two days to tell him that. Yes, but I've already told him it's today. What's so important about their first date? They hooked each other. Why don't they forget it? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't pay to forget these things, Leroy. You realize that someday when you're a family man. Not me. If I was a family man, my allowance wouldn't last 30 minutes. <laughs> Leroy, you don't think of money where sentimental things are concerned. You don't, huh? Unc, how about giving me a quarter? Your quarter? <laughs> what for? This is the anniversary of the day I met Piggy. I want to buy him a soda. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, you scat. <laughs> Miss Bronco and all the jewelry stores. I don't know where else to look for him. I think I'll stop in Peavy's for a Coke. Then go home and head him off before he gets to Marjorie. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this afternoon? Uh, fix me a Coke, will you, Peavy? Very well. Yeah, I have to hurry home. Knocking off work a little early, are you? Well, I have to see Bronco before Marjorie does and tell him tonight isn't the night. It's Friday night. How's okay. that? Friday is the anniversary of Bronco's and Marjorie's first date, Pete. My, my. Bronco has a present for her. But if she finds out he doesn't remember the date, she's going to be pretty upset. Well, women are sticklers for things like that. I, I recall the first time I got a little confused about Mrs. Peavy's birthday. Oh, well, you did? I got off on the wrong foot when I told her, told somebody that Mrs. Peavy was five years older than she said she was. <laughs> Well, that could lead to trouble. That's what I say. And then I got in deeper when I couldn't remember which day in July was her birthday. So I did what I thought was the smart thing. What was that, Pete? I brought home a present every night. <laughs> How long did that go on? Well, it developed that Mrs. Peavy's birthday wasn't until late August. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm glad Bronco doesn't have any such problem as that. Oh, Mr. Peavy. Hi, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Bronco. Bronco, I've been looking for you. Again? Mr. Gildersleeve was just telling me about your anniversary. Oh, yeah, I got the charm bracelet. Yeah, that's fine, Bronco, I want to do this I... up big, so I thought I'd stop in here and get a box of candy to take to Marge tonight. Not tonight, Bronco. No? Tonight isn't the anniversary after all. Don't you remember? It was a dance on Friday night. Miss Milford and I went with you. Say, you're right. It was a college dance on Friday night. Oh, that was close. Thanks for putting me straight. Yeah, that's all right. Glad to do it. Well, this gives me plenty of time to arrange a little celebration. 
I know. We'll go dancing again. Mm, that'd be nice. Well, Bronco, whatever you do, don't let it go until the last minute. That's what upset Marjorie this morning. You hadn't mentioned the anniversary. Well, uh, don't worry. I'll let Marge know I'm not forgetting our big Friday night the minute I get home. Uh, what kind of candy would you suggest, Mr. Peavy? Well, the bonbons should do the trick. That's what kept Mrs. Peavy happy through July and most of all this. <laughs> oh, that'll be fine. Wrap up a box for me. Very well. Now oh, you're clicking, Bronco. And, Mr. Peavy, I want to buy a good cigar for the man who understands the feminine mind better than anybody else. Oh, thank you, Bronco, but I don't smoke. Peavy! <laughs> He's talking about me! Did you tell Mr. Bronco, Miss Gilsleeve? Yes, I got him all straightened out on the date, Bertie. Yes, sir. Then we'll have the big dinner Friday night. You bet. Miss Marjorie sure was upset thinking he might forget the date. Well, I've covered every base, Bertie. I told him to let Marge know he's planning for Friday night the minute he gets home. He's loaded with gifts, and he's taking her dancing. Hello, Auntie. Yeah, Marjorie. What's this about dancing? Dancing? Who said anything about dancing? You're talking about Bertie's cousin in Lansing. <laughs> yeah, Bertie, let's not pretend you don't know him. No, sir. Dancing, Lansing. I ain't got no cousin. <laughs> well, Marjorie, have you been feeling better this afternoon? Oh, wonderful, Auntie. Of course, I still feel a little guilty about doubting Bronco. Yeah, believe me, my dear, that boy isn't forgetting anything. Oh, I know he isn't. Uncle Mort, am I being silly placing so much importance on our first date? No. You're just in love. Well, silly or not, I'm so excited, I can hardly wait until Sunday night. Yes, I... Sunday night! <laughs> well, I thought you said Friday night. Oh, no. Our first date was on October 21st. It just happened to be on a Friday night, and we went dancing. But, Marjorie... The day to remember is October 21st, and that's next Sunday. Our day. You, excuse me, Marjorie, I have to run downtown again. <laughs> hey, Marge, I'm home. Uh-oh, too late. Hello, Bronco. Hiya, Marge, honey. Say, do I have a lot to talk to you about? Oh, you do? How can I make him keep his mouth shut? <laughs> I've spent the whole day making a few plans for you and me in the very near future. Uh, Bronco! Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, let me have a word with my little wife. You but... Marge, you remember back a couple of years ago, before you were a blushing bride and I was just a blushing college boy? Boy, is his face going to be red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll never forget, Bronco. For a whole semester, I'd been sitting across the aisle from you in biology class. Of course, at that time, you didn't know I had my eye on you. Oh, yes, I did. Hey, pardon me, Bronco. Yeah, that's all right, Mr. Gildersleeve. We'll excuse you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be excused. Marge, I, I finally worked up enough courage to ask you for a date. Oh, and I couldn't refuse to go out with such a handsome boy. Oh, Marge. <laughs> Bronco... Why don't you ask her for another date, such as Sunday night? Mr. Gildersleeve, don't try to confuse me. Yes, but... Marge, would you be interested in having a date with a fellow biology student? Well, my uncle is very particular about my boyfriends, but what do you have in mind? Bronco. I want to take you out on Friday night. Oh. Zeke. Friday night? That's right, to celebrate the anniversary of our first date. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Marge? Marge, what's wrong? Oh, oh, I get it. You're happy because I remembered. <laughs> you don't even know when we had our first date. Well, I do so. It was on a Friday. Wasn't it, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> well, yes, I thought so. But Marjorie brought up a very interesting point. If you cared the least bit about me, you'd remember that our first date was October 21st. Oh, March, it so happens that I distinctly remember it was a Friday night. Oh, Friday night doesn't mean anything. You don't celebrate Christmas on the same day of the week every year. It always comes on December 25th. She's right, Bronco. Mr. Gildersleeve, don't you have to go turn off somebody's water? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bronco. Close, but the twins want to see their mom and papa. Hello, kids. Marjorie, believe me, I... Don't speak to me. I had a feeling this morning that this was going to happen. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now you two have upset the twins. I didn't do it. I'll take Ronnie. There, 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 there. Now that's all they wanted, just to be with their mom and papa. <laughs> I look at that. They don't care what day you met. The important thing is that you met. Yeah. Aren't they cute? Yeah, I never saw a girl look more like her mother. And a boy look more like his father. Two fine children. Oh, I, I guess it doesn't really make much difference when we had our first date, does it, Bronco? Well, there's one date I'll never get mixed up on. The day these little rascals were born. Huh? Huh, baby? <laughs> yes, sir. Washington's birthday. <laughs> what did you say? I said they were born on Washington's birthday. No, they weren't. They were born the day before, weren't they, Unky? Yep, pardon me. I have to go turn off somebody's water. <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. If the folks at your house eat lots of sandwiches, make sure they have the best sandwich filler you can buy. Keep stocked with Velveeta, Kraft's golden pasteurized processed cheese food. Velveeta, with its fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor, gives you a delicious sandwich. And Velveeta makes sandwiches mighty nourishing, too, because it's rich in important food values from milk. So make it your handy helper for hearty, good-eating sandwiches and snacks. Get the cheese food of finest quality, Velveeta, made only by Kraft. Gee whiz, Unc, what makes Marge and Bronco act so goofy? What do you mean, goofy? Well, get all excited about remembering some old dates. They got rocks in their heads. <laughs> no, my boy, let's be tolerant. After all, Marjorie and Bronco are young. They're just inexperienced, excitable kids, that's all. Oh? Certainly. They do silly, childish things. It isn't until a person reaches my age that he gains a full measure of poise. Good sense. Look at me. You don't see me fluttering around, getting excited about trivial things. I'm a rock of Gibraltar. Yeah. Hey, fire trucks! Fire trucks. See, they're going down our street. Hurry up, Leroy. See it under the lights. Grab some coats. Let's see where it is. I'm coming, Gibraltar. <laughs> Good night, folks. Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Lee Keel, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of those famous Kraft quality foods. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. You know, it takes three things to make a sandwich. The bread, then meat or cheese or egg, whatever you like best, in between. And the third thing is, mmm, a touch of real mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. That is, if it's Kraft's prepared mustard. There are two kinds, you know. Kraft salad mustard, mild and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. Remember, when you add just a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft's prepared mustard. Groucho Marx, you bet your life he's next on...